it was like any other day. I said to Jade, I'm off to get some milk to the dairy, and I went to the dairy, and I go to the dairy, and my mate pulls up in the car, hey, dude, let's come get on. And, yeah, just, we'll just go for half an hour because I've got to bring the milk back home. It started. Two days later, Jade's ringing the phone, hang the phone up, don't want to deal with it. And yeah, the deals start happening, the, the chaos, the, you know, the fiends, the hotels, the all that stuff that comes with it all. And two weeks earlier, I'd made a decision to go to rehab. I couldn't cope. Suddenly I was left with me and I didn't like what I saw. Um, you know, and I, was, I was broken. You know, through the series of events that sort of led to me cleaning up. You know, I still didn't see that all this shit, you know, the judiciary system, the mental health system, um, you know, the loss of relationships, all that stuff. I did not see that it was the drugs really doing it. A boy. You know, you're looking at a boy. Uh, maybe, what, what, a 19-year-old boy, really? And, and a 19-year-old body not really knowing him. I had no idea of who I was. Uh, had no idea really um, of what my purpose was. As usual, I'd read my way through a withdrawal. I'd read about 3,000 pages, and it was about half past four or five o'clock in the morning. I'd been awake for about four days straight. And I put down the book because my eyes were so tired, I simply could not see any more. I glanced out the window, and dawn was rising. Extremely pedestrian dawn, but it was dawn. And a thought popped into my head, maybe I've got a drug problem. And I thought, oh, don't be silly, you know you've got to drive home, it's blah, blah, blah. But then I thought, well, maybe you really have got one. Maybe the reason that <clears throat> life has gone like this is that you actually have got a serious drug problem that you're denying. I used to cry myself to sleep most nights and just thinking, I need to fucking stop. But I didn't know how, and because of the amount that I smoked, I thought, fuck, it's going to take me so long to get over this. And... The night before we got arrested, there was me and my partner and someone else in the room and I said, you know, police are going to come and get me soon. And I used to actually hope that they would. So I'd be like, okay, well, I'll go out and I'll just have one pill. But then someone would offer me something else and I'd be like, okay, why not? I had no self-control. I just couldn't say no. And I'd get to the point, I remember getting to the point one evening where, where I was given a massive line of just a, a pile of powder and I remember thinking what's going to happen? I'd been stripped of my manhood I'd lost that at that moment of those getting beaten and just made fun of and and then coming home and your baby and lady's gone and your house is packed and I lay in the fetal position for two days man I just fell to the well she had left the mattress um, and like a sheet and I just lay there and I, I think it was like two days or something but I, I woke up with her coming into the room and I was so scared and she just like looked at me and was like, what are you doing here? And I just said, I need help. Yeah. And uh, that was the last time I used. It's the last time I ever used drugs. You know, I've always said it's all good if you think you're going crazy because you're probably not. It's when you th don't think you're going crazy that you might want to check yourself. You know, and I, um, I went to a place not many people have been, and the few that I know that have been there, there's something in their eyes. I'd lost my direction. I came back to New Zealand, um, stopped using. Uh, I think I, actually, I think I used once here, and a friend of mine said, "I don't like you. You change. You change when you use." And I'd never ever heard that before, and that was the nail in the coffin. I thought, "Okay, I'm stopping." I didn't feel like I was anybody. It's not like I became someone different. I just lost any kind of shred of identity. I didn't know anything about myself anymore. I didn't know one true thing about myself. And I realised that I needed to change. All right, I'm owed 10 grand from all the people that were getting it from me. And they were all my so-called friends who said they would be there and promised John that they would look after me and they all come back to my house the day after I got arrested and, oh, sweet, so when are you getting some more? And I looked at them and I said, are you fucking dumb? I don't want anything to do with this. My life was, is over. I didn't really start to notice the difference and start to recognise parts of me for about 18 months, you know, which is, is a long time without yourself. Um, 
Yeah, feeling like being trapped. Um, a fear that, a fear of what's behind your eyes. You know, it was a fear that you just can't escape. I think we could do another hour talking about what rehab's done for me, but it gave me the basics to live life again normal and deal with the baggage that I had when I came into recovery. It gave, it, I got to deal with that before I stepped back into the real world. You could easily clean up step into this real world with all this baggage and still be a really nasty pe person, still sort of like that person I talked about before that is clean but still sick. Rehab gave me a chance to get the meds for that sickness. I did seek help because it, it, my life was getting a bit unlivable. It was just this, like I, I was clean and I was healthy and eating and working hard and it was good, but... At the same time, I just felt like a little hamster on a wheel, running, 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 trying to keep up, trying to, trying to cope, trying to keep my head above water. I got friends back, I got my family back. You know, a bit of money in the bank. I haven't had to rip someone off, hurt someone. You know, lie to people, manipulate people. You know, try and destroy people's lives so I can get an extra few hundred dollars, at all. You know, I haven't done that for some time, and that's that says a lot to me. You know. When I was off, when I'd been off for a while, phoned me one time and said, what's it like? What's it like? And I thought for a bit and I said, I'll tell you what, there's only one thing I've come across that's better than drugs, only one thing. And he said, what's that? And I said, not drugs. <laughs>